Mm. Cool. I think that's us. Uh, that's us live on the page just now. So, hmm. We'll give it um, give it another minute until uh, just to let people uh, come and join if they need to, and then we'll go live after that. Is that all right, Em? Sounds good to me, Adrian. You're good. Um, yeah, I think we'll just we'll go ahead and we'll just let people um, uh, join in when they can. Great. Uh, okay, so hello everybody. Um, welcome to Lunchtime Live. Uh, I'm Adrian Mather. I work in the communications department here at uh, Free Agent, and I'm here with Emily Coltman, FCA, as our chief accountant, who is bilingual in both accounting ease and in plain English. Uh, she's going to be here taking all questions about expenses today. Uh, as I said, we're both from Free Agent, uh, online accounting for freelancers and small businesses. Uh, we do run regular Q and A sessions with Emily every Wednesday morning here at uh, here on Google Plus between ten o'clock and eleven o'clock UK time. Um, but today we're trying a special sort of lunchtime version uh, through video, where we're going to be encouraging people just to come and ask questions face to face um, and directly to Emily. Uh, as I said, today's topic is claiming business expenses for the UK businesses. So uh, without further ado, let's dive in. Uh, Emily, I'd yes. just like to ask you a little bit about limited companies and sole traders, if that's okay. Um, yes, it is. Excellent. Can you briefly explain the difference between claiming expenses as a sole trader and as the director of a limited company? That is a very good question. So a little bit of background information. Most freelancers will be either sole traders or they'll be directors of limited companies. Freelancer can equally well apply to both. As a sole trader, Basically, there's no separate legal entity involved in the business. It's just you, your computer, and your dog. Um, and it's very, very simple. Director of a limited company, there's two legal entities involved. There's you and the company. Even if you're the only director and the only shareholder in that company, it's still a separate legal entity from you. 
So what you need to remember about that is that the money that's made by the business, by the company, belongs to the company, not to you. Separate legal entities, the money belongs to the company. There's only three different ways that you can get money out of a limited company without incurring extra tax potentially. And what those are is the company can pay you a salary as a director. If you're a shareholder, it can pay you dividends, so long as it's not got enough profit to do that. And also, it can pay you back for any expenses you've incurred on the company's behalf. And that might be in one of two ways. You might actually physically pay some money out of your own pocket, say you buy a train ticket to go and visit a client and you use your own credit card. Or you might possibly incur costs that you don't pay physical cash for, things like renting the company a room in your home or um, traveling in your own car on company business. Those are both costs that you do not pay necessarily the same amount of physical cash for as the amount that you claim, but they are still costs that the company is allowed to pay you back for. So in terms of claiming expenses, when you're a sole trader, because you're a separate legal entity, not a separate legal entity, I beg your pardon, there's not so much risk of extra tax if the business pays you back more or less than you've spent on it personally. So as a sole trader, what you need to think about is can the business itself get tax relief on whatever cost you're incurring. When I say tax relief, what I'm talking about in this context is when it t puts that cost into its day-to-day -day running costs, can it use that cost to reduce its tax bill? Most costs you can, but the rule of thumb is that it has to be wholly and exclusively for the purposes of the trade. That's what the revenue say. In plain English, that means it's got to be for your business and for your business only. I had a question on the Q&A this morning, which was, as a sole trader, can I claim for the cost of music that I listen to on iTunes during the working day? The answer is no, you're out of luck because that is not to further your business unless you're a music critic. What that's doing is letting you perhaps relax, switch off, um, r just concentrate, but that's a personal thing. It's not solely for the purpose of your business, so you wouldn't be able to claim that. So as I say, as a sole trader, what you need to focus on is can your business get tax relief on that cost? When you're the director of a limited company, the area around claiming expenses is if you pay for that cost personally, can the company then pay you back without either you or the company or both incurring some extra tax? And sometimes there are some very tricky rules around how you would treat it if there is extra tax involved. For example, if the company pays you for travel or accommodation mm -hmm. that isn't strictly for business, then what you might well find is that the tax and national insurance treatment is different whether you arrange and pay for the travel or accommodation, whether you arrange it but the company pays, or whether the company arranges and pays for it direct, the tax treatment will be different. So make sure you speak to your accountant or you check out the revenue website. So that's the difference between for claiming expenses. For a sole trader, it's can your business get tax relief. For a limited company, it's if you've incurred a cost personally, can the company pay you back without either you or the company paying extra tax or national insurance? Excellent. Um, Emily, we've uh, had a slew of questions that are in on uh, on text just now, so I'm just going to delve straight into those if that's okay. Please. We'll take them one by one. Um, Devon is asking, in what cases, if any, are meals spent networking with other freelancers tax deductible? And what portion of the meal is, ta is deductible? That is a very, very good question, and the reason why it is a very good question is because it is a grey area. There's no guidance on it from the revenue, encouragingly. So what I'm giving you here, Devon, is my own opinion. If you, as a freelancer, are working with a group of other freelancers, you're collaborating, you're cooperating, you're working together, my suggestion would be to think about whether you're actually away from your own usual place of work when you're having that meal. So for example, if you meet your freelancers at a local cafe or a restaurant or something like that and you're discussing business. Because the rules do say that everybody has to eat to live when you're a sole trader in particular. So they say that sole traders should only claim meals for when they're on journeys outside the usual pattern of business. For the director of a limited company, it's when you're traveling on business, so it doesn't necessarily have to be outside the normal pattern of your business. In terms of having a collaborative meal with other freelancers, if you're working together to discuss business and what have you, 
my suggestion would be you could probably get away with putting a few of those through your business books and be prepared to argue it with a revenue inspector if they ever came knocking. If you take turns to pay for a group of freelancers, my suggestion would be claim your own cost only because the revenue actually say that there should be no tax relief on meals unless you are entertaining employees and they are very strict about what constitutes employees. So as I say, my opinion is you could probably get away with putting some of those through your books but don't go mad and do be prepared to justify it to the revenue and as I say that is just my opinion so you might want to speak to your own accountant. Okay, uh, next question is from Neil who asks uh, depreciation on business assets. How is this worked out and what expenses is it for? Depreciation on business assets. Now I do apologise if I start talking accountantees. Adrian, tell me if I do. I'll, I'll keep you in check. Thank you. Um, well, what depreciation is, Neil? It's a way of spreading the value of an asset over its useful life. An asset, in this const in this sense, is what accountants might call a fixed asset. So. In plain English, it is a large piece of equipment that's large in terms of cost relative to your usual day-to-day -day running costs, which is going to be useful to your business for more than about a year or two. So something like a computer would be a capital asset or a fixed asset, something like the chair I'm sitting on, but something like a battery pack wouldn't be because that's not a large cost in the context of your business's day-to-day -day running costs. Also, it may well not be useful for more than a year. So that's what an asset is. And as I say, depreciation is a way of spreading the value of that asset over the years of its useful life because an asset it does not appear in your business's day-to-day -day running costs on your profit and Hey, oh, I'm afraid we seem to have lost Emily there. Um, you just bear with us two seconds, everyone. I'll tr we'll try and uh, get her back. A bit of technical difficulties. Um, as I said, please do keep the questions coming in. As I said, we've got a load of them uh, on th that have already come through. Uh, the event page is up as well, so if you need to ask anything, uh, or if you'd like us to ask anything, then uh, leave questions there uh, and we'll come through to them. Uh, we'll also be posting a load of links as well through to um, various uh, things that we've done here at Free Agent which might help. We've got a, um, uh, we have a, a few white papers. We've got a, a big A to Z guide of expenses as well which we'll post a link to. Uh, and we've also got a rather handy infographic as well which, uh, which, which we recently did which is about um, Claiming for food and drink when you are a um, uh, when you're a sole trader. So um, yep, we'll I'm back. That. I think. Oh, hi Emily. Are you in now? Yep. We need to get your sound right as well. Just getting plugged back in. Right. Well, we're waiting for that. As I said, um, we have a uh, yeah our. Um, a to Z guide and uh, infographic as well, which we'll post links to on the event page. Um, you can also go through to our website as well, which is freeagent.com. Um, if you go to the blog there, there is a lot of information that we've done over the last couple of years purely about expenses too. So if you go there, look at the tags for uh, expenses and other tips and advice, uh, you should be able to find some of those as well. Uh, and also, if you're a free agent user, remember you can access our um, our knowledge base there as well, which is, should have uh, a lot of information for um, yeah, entering and managing expenses within free agent. Uh, so uh, please do take a look at that. And said so again, the website address is freeagent.com um, and have a look around the, the homepage. It should be pretty easy to find whatever you're looking for there. Um, in the meantime, still waiting for Emily to arrive. Any better? That's much better, Emily. Yeah, I can hear Good. you loud and clear now. <laughs> My apologies for that. Now, how far did I get into Neil's question before I cut out? Um, about halfway through. Um, we'll do it again, but just uh, yeah, keep it down to um, uh, just just keep it nice and tight, and then we'll uh, we'll head into okay. the other ones. Okay. 
No problem. So depreciation is a way of spreading the value of an asset across its useful life to the business. The asset will go onto your balance sheet. Think of it like driving a car, Neil. If you drive a new car off the forecourt, it immediately loses some of its value. You couldn't sell it back for what you've just bought it for. So basically what depreciation is, it's a way of spreading the value of an asset across its useful life, but you cannot actually claim tax relief on that. You have to use capital allowances to get tax relief on the asset itself, but that's such a complicated topic. We'd be here till next Christmas if I started on that now. Excellent. Okay, uh, next up is a question from James who asks, he says, uh, I'm a sound engineer as a sole trader and I buy music all the time so that I have a wide variety of music genres to play at shows and also for research into bands before I work with them. Is this claimable? Now, I think we touched on this briefly uh, during the first question, but um, yeah, can he claim yes. those? You know, James, I would say that in your case it is because you are actually using that music as part of your business. You need it for demos, to play, you need it to, um, you, you do actually need it for your business. Unlike, for example, if I'm an accountant working from home, I wouldn't be able to claim the cost of music because it's to help me relax rather than to do tax returns or accounts for my clients. But you and your business, I think, yes, you can claim that. Excellent. Uh, next question is from Esco, who says, I'm a sole trader. Uh, I need a car for my work, but I occasionally use the car for personal use. Uh, that doesn't sound like wholly and exclusively for the business of the trade. Uh, so does that mean I can't claim relief on any of my car-related expenses? You will be glad to know, Esco, that no, it doesn't, because the revenue do let you apportion a cost if there's some mixed use. And a car is a very interesting question. When you're a sole trader, you, um, if your sales are under 79,000 a year, you can use what I call the mileage method, which means that you add up the number of miles you've traveled on business, and then you multiply that by the revenues approved mileage rate, which is 45p a mile for the first 10,000 miles you travel in the tax year, 25p a mile thereafter. You do that really easily in free agent just by doing add new mileage. The other alternative, which might result in more tax relief if your car is a gas guzzler or something like that, is you add up the actual costs of running the car, and then you work out how much you use the car for business and how much for private, and you put into your books a percentage of the car's running costs based on how much you use it for business. And in that case, you can also claim capital allowances on the business proportion of the cost of the car. Excellent. That actually answers his follow-up question as well, where he says, uh, can I come a proportion and how is it calculated? So that is right. Excellent. Um, next question is from Adrian, who says, is there an issue with making significant capital purchases, such as a laptop computer, using a personal credit card and then claiming this back as an expense through Limited? Absolutely not. Um, just make sure that you check the rules for what you're buying on the revenues website. If you go to hmrc.gov.uk and look at the heading for employers, underneath that you'll see expenses and benefits. Have a look in there. There is no reason why you can't buy things on your personal credit card and then have the company pay you back for them. But as I said earlier, just watch out for the tax consequences of that if the asset is not completely used for business. Okay. Uh, next question is from Pierre Luigi, who says, I am a director of my own company. Uh, I live in a house which is owned by my limited company. Uh, I pay rent to live here to my own limited company. Uh, can I still claim for the room I use as an office? Uh, also, I use my personal telephone and broadband mostly for work and other utilities, so can I claim for those too? Okay, I'm going to say, Pierre Luigi, you need to speak to your accountant about that. Because the company owns your house, that's actually going to be different for tax purposes than the norm, because usually it would be you as an individual who would own the house. So I'm going to, to avoid giving you the wrong guidance, I'm going to say you need to talk to your accountant about that. Okay, uh, next question is from uh, Rada, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, who says, I'm currently paying for a business mentoring course to help me grow my business. Can I claim for this? Training is an interesting point, Rada. Um, when you're a sole trader, you are allowed to claim for the cost of training to keep your skills up to date, but you can't claim the cost of training to get you into a position to run your business. But in your case, as it's mentoring to help you grow your business, I would say, in my opinion, that that would be okay. Okay. Um, got another question here from, uh, from James. Um, he says, I'm fairly new to being self-employed. I'm a sole trader and travel constantly for my work. Uh, I'm wondering what I can claim for as far as food and travel goes. 
Right. Well, that's a very interesting question, James, because when you're a sole trader, what the revenue say is that you can claim the cost of journeys that you make on business, and but they must be just for business. They mustn't be for mixed purposes. If you make a journey that is for mixed purposes, for example, you go to visit a client and then you pick up your kids from school on the way home, the revenue would probably not let you claim any of the cost for that because you'd have had to do the journey anyway to pick up your children. In terms of if you're just traveling on business, then you can claim the cost of travel and accommodation. In terms of food and drink, though, the revenue are quite strict about that for sole traders because they say everybody has to eat to live. So what they say is for sole traders, you can claim the cost of food and drink you buy when you're traveling if A, you have to stay away from home overnight on business, or B, the journey is outside your normal pattern of business, and helpfully they don't define that. And then thirdly, if your business is, quote, by nature itinerant, unquote. So by that they mean, for example, if you're a self-employed lorry driver and you're on the road all the time. But lots of people have said, well, hang on a minute, isn't, for example, someone like a jobbing builder, isn't their business by nature itinerant? I would say yes. So it is worthwhile, if your business is one that does make you travel quite a lot, I would say be prepared to argue with an inspector if they say, oh, no, I don't think it is. Be prepared to defend your point, but just don't go mad, would be my suggestion. So in terms of food and drink, those are your rules. By nature, right in your own business, you're staying away from home overnight, or your journey is outside the normal pattern of your business. Excellent. Um, next question here is from Luke, uh, which is much with an urgent, so uh, uh -huh, okay. I'll, I'll ask this one next. Uh, he says, uh, can I claim any of my home rent as a business expense as I use a room as an office? That is a very good question, Luke. It's part of a bigger area about business use of home, but I'll answer your question specifically. If the house belongs to, to you or you rent it from a landlord and you use one of the rooms partly for business, then yes, you can claim what's called the business proportion of your rent. And what the business proportion is, what the revenue say, excuse me, is that you can use any reasonable basis to work out what the business element of your home running costs like rent and electricity and what have you are. What I usually do is say, count up the number of rooms in your house, and then you also count up how many of those rooms you use for business, and then you do a calculation based on those two figures. But what I'd say to you, Luke, is don't use a room just for business in the UK. If you do that in the UK, then and if you happen to own your home, in your case I know you don't, but in later years you might do, if you own your home and then you sell it, and you have used a room exclusively for business, then the revenue can demand capital gains tax on the sale value of that particular room because they can say, well, that's not a personal asset, that's a business asset. That's not part of your principal private residence, your home, which is exempt from capital gains tax. So that's one, just one point to bear in mind. If you're renting, I'd probably say then it's not such a big problem if you use a room 100% for business because there wouldn't be the issue of capital gains tax on the sale. But if you own your home or if it's own mortgaged, use the room for something else as well as for business. For example, I use my home office as a music room too. Okay, um, next question here is from Eleanor who or was, uh, Eleanor, who says, I buy many of my expenses on my personal American Express card to get air miles. Is this okay, and would I then have to put these transactions into free agent and attach a copy of the receipt or invoice and or a copy of the Amex statement? Okay, Eleanor. Well, I would say that in terms of if you are incurring the expenses on your Amex card, that's no problem. Just be aware of what I said earlier about if you're a limited company, make sure that when the company pays you back, there aren't any extra tax or national insurance consequences because of what the expenses are. Record them in free agent under expenses, which you might find under the My Money menu or which might sit at the top on its own, depending if you've got staff. And also, yes, do attach a copy of the receipt or a copy of the Amex statement. You probably don't need to do both, and I would say go for the receipt first. Okay, uh, next question here is from uh, Dave, uh, who says, I am an LLP partnership, and I have a company van that is used for business and some personal usage. How should I handle claiming diesel, insurance, road tax, etc.? That is a very interesting question because the van will almost certainly belong to the LLP, which like a limited company is a separate legal entity. So what will happen is that all the costs for running the van will go through the LLP's account. They will be paid for by the LLP. They'll be in the, um, they'll, they'll be in the books. Um, but what will happen is 
If you are an employee of the LLP, then there will be a taxable benefit on the van. If you're actually a partner in the partnership, Dave, then it could be different, and I would suggest talk to your accountant about that, because LLPs are quite unusual, and I don't want to give you the wrong guidance. So my suggestion is, if it's owned by the LLP, it will probably be the LLP to pay all the costs, but how the private use element gets treated will be different depending on your, if you're a partner or if you're an employee, so I would suggest you talk to your accountant. Okay, uh, another question here from uh, Radha, uh, who, um, and this follows on from, uh, from something that we were talking about a couple of questions back. Uh, she says, I'm a sole trader and I work from home for a few days per week. What can I claim under the use of home? Very, very good question. Okay, so what you can claim under business use of home. These are costs to think, to think that you might be able to claim. Rent if you're renting your home. Council tax. The interest only if you own your home and you're paying a mortgage. The interest of the mortgage only, not the capital. For heating your home, gas and electricity. Those would all come under what I call the business proportion, which means you would work out um, how much you use your home for business using number of rooms and usage of those rooms and calculate that. Phone and broadband, you need to work out what you've actually used for business, so which calls were for phone, how much um, were for business phone, how much use of the broadband was for business, and take it from there. Insurance, depends on whether it's a business policy, a home business policy, in which case you get 100%, or whether it's whole household that also includes your business, in which case you do the business proportion. Water, you cannot claim at all unless you have got a separate pipe for your business and you've got heavy usage. So something like if you run a laundrette from your home or you've got a poodle grooming parlour and you need the extra water for washing and scrubbing the dogs, then you, if you've got a separate water pipe, then and then only can you claim water. Repairs to your house and cleaning of your house, what you need to decide there is whether the repair or the cleaning is to the business part of the house. If it's just to the part of the house you use for business, then you can claim all of that cost times by the percentage that you use that room for business. If the repair or cleaning is for the whole house, you claim the business proportion of it. If the repair or cleaning excludes the business part of your house, you cannot claim any of it. So let's take the example of repairs. So if it is, say, to paint your home office, and let's say you use your home office 80% for business, you claim 80% of the cost of the painting. If it is a repair to the whole house, so say a roof repair, you claim the business proportion. If it's a repair, say you're painting your living room and you don't use your living room for business, you don't claim any of it. Okay. Um, I've got a follow-up from, uh, from Luke. I think it's kind of along the same, um, the same lines. Um, we were talking to him, uh, you answered him about um, uh, calculating the number of business rooms in his house. Um, yes. He's saying... Um, he said, therefore, I understand that I have to add up the number of business rooms in my house, um, but uh, do I then divide by the total of rooms and then work out the percentage to claim based on that? That's right. So, for example, in my house there are 10 rooms, um, 10 rooms in total. I use one of them for business, my office, so I would start by multiplying the cost by one-tenth. Then I would also have to multiply it by 80% because I use my home office 80% for business and 20% for private. So it would be whatever the cost is times one tenth times 80%. Okay. Um, just for everyone else as well, we do have a couple of, um, of, of articles about this which we'll be posting in the uh, on the event page. Um, so uh, if you're unsure or you still need a bit more information about how this all works, then we'll post those and you should be able to find out there. Um, Next question is from James, who says, as a freelancer working in London, are you able to claim Oyster travel cards on expenses if you work at four different companies in a week? Very good question, James. What I would ask you in response to that is, what journeys do you do using your Oyster card? Is it just business or is it business and personal? Because if it's a mixture, then what you have to do is to work out how much of your journeys was for business and how much for personal, what percentage? Because Oyster card, I think you play a you pay a flat rate, don't you? You don't pay so much per journey. So let's say you spent 50 quid in the week on topping up your Oyster cards and you anticipate that 80% of your travel was for business and 20% for private. What you'd have to do is claim 50 quid times 80%, so you claim 40 quid. Excellent. Um, and in terms of, uh, would you then need to, to, to show your workings out as well um, when you're submitting that through to HMRC? 
Well, you wouldn't actually send that specific information okay. through to HMRC, but I would keep a record of it because if HMRC ever want to inspect your records, then they will want to see exactly how each cost has been calculated. So you either show them a receipt or if you don't actually have a receipt for that specific cost, you make some notes about it. Okay. Uh, next question is from Pauline, who says, "What are the implications of uh, capital gains tax of claiming mortgage interest payment as part of your use of home as an office?" Okay, Pauline. Well, if you are using your home, um, if you're using a room of, of your business of your home for business, then so long as you are not using that room exclusively for business, there should be no capital gains tax implications. If, on the other hand, you use a room 100% for business, then the revenue can make you pay capital gains tax on that portion of the sale of your home, so just be careful. Okay, um, uh, do, do, do Esco is back, he says, um, uh, just to confirm, he's a sole trader, uh, so he says, is business liability insurance claimable? Is business li liability insurance claimable? That would be 100% business, I'd say yes. Okay, um, Robert's back. I think we. Um, uh, we answered his question about uh, food and accommodation whilst travelling. Um, he says, um, obviously nobody really wants to stand up and argue such cases with HMRC. Uh, how frequent are investigations into this sort of thing as opposed to a return just being accepted smoothly? Put it this way, Robert, I have never actually known a sole trader's tax return be investigated, and that is in 13 years of being a qualified accountant working with small businesses. It is rare, so put your mind at rest. <laughs> uh, do, 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 just... But it is also worth bearing in mind that HMRC do have the right to check your records. They have fairly recently introduced a system of business record checks, so it's not out of the question that it could happen. So just be prepared is all I, is all I will say. Okay. Um, I do have another question from Luke. He says, could you explain the maximum amount claimable under home office, if there is one? There, is, there isn't one. If you are backing it up with actual... Um, payments that you've made. So if you are claiming a proportion of an electricity bill so that you have actually paid, the revenue cannot set a cap. The only reason why they set a cap in for some costs is if they're not going to investigate further because they say for example for employees who are working at home because their work dictates that they have to, then the revenue will not investigate claims of £4 a week or less. That's what they say. But in terms of a sole trader working at home, claiming a proportion of your actual home running costs, the revenue should not put a cap on that. They might ask you to prove what you've claimed, but they shouldn't cap it. Okay. Um, another question from Adrian. He says, uh, is there an issue with making significant capital purchases, such as a laptop computer, using We've a personal... we Oh, we have answered that one. Sorry, I do apologize. That's uh, all right. Uh, I'm kind of looking through the uh, the chat window just now, um, the, uh, seeing if there's anything that we've yet to answer. Um, another from Eleanor. Uh, as both me and my husband work from home, can we claim two rooms for business? We have our main office in the bedroom where all the files and the de uh, and the desktop computer are, and one of us sometimes works in the living room. Uh, we're a limited company. Can we do this? Yes, you can, Eleanor, yes. You can claim um, a business proportion calculation for the main bedroom. You can also claim what will be a different calculation, because you don't use it so much, for the living room. But actually, I'm really glad that's cropped up, because if you are a limited company, if you're running your business through a limited company, then yes, you use the same method to work out how much you can claim, but because you're a separate legal entity, remember, from the company, you must draw up an agreement that says the company is renting these rooms from you, you also should then put the rental income on your own tax return, but that will be offset by the costs you've incurred, the home running costs you've incurred, and your own accountant will be able to help you with putting in place an agreement and with filling in the tax return completely. It's not difficult, but your accountant will be able to advise. Okay. Um, so a good one from, uh, from Ian who says, I collect a lot of receipts. Do I have to keep hard copies or are digital copies sufficient? Digital copies are absolutely fine, fine Ian. The only time when you have to keep documents in their original format, the revenue say, is if the document has 
tax on it that isn't VAT. So something like a bank interest certificate or a dividend voucher, then you have to keep the originals. If you're emailed the originals, though, you can keep them as PDFs. But in all other cases, the revenue are perfectly happy to accept soft copies, provided that they show everything the hard copy does. So if you've got something like a bill with terms and conditions on the back, copy both sides. Okay, uh, Pierluigi's back. He says, uh, this is another mileage question. He says, 90% uh, of the miles that I drive are business miles. Um, I claim, um, uh, it says, is there another formula that he can use other than claiming for miles? Uh, I.e., the company owns a car and I use it for 10% of the time. Um, I'd like to put all of the running costs through um, rather than just mileage, so can he do that? Okay, Pierluigi, if you have a limited company and the company owns the car, what will happen is that, you, that the company will pay for all the costs of running the car, so fuel and insurance and MOT and repairs and servicing and all the rest, those go through the company. But because the car is available to you for private use, you will have extra tax to pay on the benefit of having access to that car for private use and also if the company pays for your private fuel. So you need to make sure that that goes on your Form P11D from the company, the benefit for private use of the car and the benefit for private fuel. And the revenue are quite strict about it. They say it doesn't matter if you use the car privately or not. What's important is was it available to you for private use. I knew somebody once who broke their leg and the revenue said, well the car's still available to you for private use, you just have to hire a chauffeur. So they are very, very strict about that. Also bear in mind, if you're registered for VAT and the company is reclaiming VAT on all the private fuel as well as the business fuel, you do have to add the fuel scale charge to your VAT returns to compensate for the VAT you've reclaimed on your private fuel. Okay, um, right, this is a five minute warning for everyone, um, so we're going to wrap it up in about five minutes. Uh, we do have quite a few questions in, um, in the chat window, so uh, we'll get through all of those, we'll get through as many of them as we can. Um, if we don't manage to get them all, then we will come back and we'll, we'll, we'll answer them and we'll put, them, uh, put answers up, so, uh, so don't worry, we will get to you. Um, next one is from Alfonso, he says, this is a bit out of context, but I usually pay business expenses with my personal credit card. Uh, sometimes I lose my receipts, but all transactions appear in the credit card statement. Is this enough or do I always need to keep a receipt? Keep a receipt when you possibly can, Alfonso. If you haven't got the receipt, then make sure that you do attach the credit card statement to your purchase. Okay, um, uh, Adrian has a follow-up. He says, uh, this is following on from the depreciation answer that we gave earlier. Um, if I bought, for example, a, an £1,000 laptop, does that depreciate to zero over three years or does it reduce by 33% of the current value each year? So that would be like 666 in year two and then et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Up to you, Adrian, is the honest answer. In free agent, what it will do is, if you say the laptop is, let's say, £900 for ease of calculation, if the laptop's £900 and you say it's three years, um, then it'll put £300 worth of depreciation through the books every year and it'll take the value down to zero. Okay. Uh, Steve asks, he says, uh, um, if you uh, attach invoices on free agent, is this sufficient or do you need to save them elsewhere as well? If you, attach, if you attach a receipt to free agent, what you're doing is making a record of it along with the transaction. I would recommend saving it elsewhere too. Use an online backup system, something like Deposit It, and back your folders containing your receipts up to that. Then you've got belt and braces, you've got it attached to the transaction, and you've got the online backup. Okay. Um, next is uh, from Robert. Uh, I don't think we've asked this one yet, but it's another, uh, it's another car question. It says, I'm a home-based self-employed sole trader. Uh, Perhaps about 10% of my personal car travel is uh, work-related. Mm. Uh, I'm also considering purchasing a new car. What is claimable? So I think he's asking there if he's allowed to claim if he gets a new car because he uses it for work. Yes. Well, what you would do, Robert, is you can, as a sole trader, you own the car, so you can decide whether you want to use the mileage method and claim 45p or 25p a mile, um, depending on how many miles you've done in the tax year, or whether you want to use the actual cost method, which is claim capital allowances on the business element, on the business proportion of the cost of the car, and also on all the um, cost of actually running the car, the fuel, the repairs, the insurance, and what have you. You can claim the business proportion of that. So there's two methods. Either you just work out the mileage and claim that, or you do a business proportion of the actual cost of buying and running the car. 
Okay, um, uh, next question quick from Tom. He says, are tickets for industry events, uh, like lectures, etc., uh, claimable, and if so, under what section of a, uh, of a tax return? Okay, so in terms of are they are they um, deductible, you need to think, is that training to bring your skills up to a level where you can run the business, in which case the answer is no, or are they to brush up and maintain existing skills, in which case it's yes. In terms of what section of the tax return they go in, it would be, if you're a sole trader, it would be under the expenses part of the self-employment section. Okay, um, two sets, so another one, a minute ago. Um, oh, by the way, everyone as well, if, uh, if, if, if we don't get to you, then uh, if you can post, take the questions and post them into the event page, then we'll be able to come back to them, uh, to come back to them later and we will answer them all. Um, uh, do, do, do. Sorry, they're all still here. I'm trying to find which ones we haven't done yet. Um, well, there was someone asking about... Um, Categories within free agent. Uh, yes, is it? Uh, it's from Luke again. He says, if possible to answer, what are the main categories that you'd usually claim under business expenses? Just fairly really, broad. That I'm afraid is a how long is a piece of string question, Luke. It's, quite, <laughs> it's going to be different for every business. Some businesses will use web hosting an awful lot. Others will hardly use it. Some will use travel a great deal. Others will hardly use it. Postage and stationery you'll find in most businesses. But again, it really, really depends on what kind of business you've got. Um, and Luke as well, uh, refer back to the uh, to the A to Z, which we'll be posting the link to as well. Uh, that's yes. got uh, a whole slew of, uh, of of different sort of expenses categories. So hopefully that'll be that'll be uh, of, of use to you as well. Um, I don't think we've done this one from Pauline, um, which is uh, I now use what used to be a personal computer and laptop as a business asset. What cost do I show on the account as the value on transfer to the business? Very, very good question, Pauline. What you need to do is you need to work out the market value of the laptop at the point where you brought it into the business. And that might be by looking for a similar um, item on eBay. Um, then you bring it into the business, you record it as an out-of-pocket expense in free agent, and because it's you individually, as a person, transferring it into the business, you put 0% VAT. Excellent. Um, looking through, I think that's about it. Um, I think we've answered all of them. Um, if we haven't, then, as I said, please do put them and post them onto the event page. Uh, apologies in advance if we have, uh, and we will and Emily will come back later on and answer them. But uh, I think that's uh, that's going to be it for today. Thank you very, very much indeed, everyone, for for asking your questions. Uh, they always make these things so much easier for us, uh, and we've had loads of them to uh, uh, to look through. So really hope that. Uh, 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 that, that Emily's views and, um, and, and the info has been really useful to you. Um, remember as well that we do run weekly Q&A sessions here on Google Plus and on Facebook as well. Uh, they're every Wednesday between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning uh, and that's uh, UK time. Um, we do them on a range of topics as well, so uh, keep an eye out on, on both the pages and, uh, and find us there. Uh, on Google+, Plus, just have a look for Free Agent, um, and on Facebook, we're under Free Agent App, so go and like us there and, uh, and, and keep an eye out and, uh, and do join us again. Um, so all that's left to say, thank you very much, Emily. Really, pleasure. really appreciated that. Yep, pleasure. Thank you all for asking questions. Not at all, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Great. Bye. Bye.